Hey everyone, today I'm going to be talking about Self-Chill Stormbrand, how it works, and why it's actually one of the most insane Cirrus farmers in the entire game. Self-Chill is a mechanic that has existed for a long time, however recently, content creator Rutu discovered a much more efficient way of reflecting chills, whilst also allowing for those chills to be scaled up to 30%, giving a Tailwind-like effect that is about three times as strong as the elevated Tailwind mod on Hunter Boots. At first I wasn't very interested in exploring this, as Stormbrand can't scale its activation speed via action speed, However, the idea came to me the other day that, in fact, we can still use Ailment Effect to simultaneously scale up our shocks while still buffing the reversed chill effect for movement speed. This allows us to still gain damage from our Ailment Effect scaling, and we can use some other tools to then spread shocks while scaling up Impulsor damage to the point where every enemy in a pack of mobs will be guaranteed to explode for over 50% of their max HP. Additionally, due to Impulse's pseudo-shock immunity, we don't need to invest very much money into setting this up. In fact, converting your regular Stormbrand Assassin should cost 5-10 to 10 exalts at absolute most, but it can be done for even less if you want. So with all that said, let's take a look at how this works. So we'll start off with the core of the build and what makes it all work. So it starts off with Malagara's Restraint, and that causes shocks that you cause to be reflected back to you. Now in conjunction with Cold Conduction, when you reflect shocks, it also reflects a chill onto yourself. And with Winterweave, those chills that you're reflecting onto yourself get reversed. So rather than slowing you down, they're speeding you up a great deal. We then use Ailment Effect on all our cost digits pretty much. So all of our medium cost is here, here, and then down here. A scaling up effect of non-damaging ailments, which is a stat that increases the effect of chill. At, a, at the default amount, the chill that you're reflecting back to yourself is only 10% action speed, which is equivalent to elevated tailwind. However, with all the investment that we have here, we get the chill effect to around 27 or 26%. Right? And you, you can make it go up to 30% at maximum, but you don't have to even go that far. As long as it's scaled around about 25% or more, you, you'll get pretty good value out of it. Now, that's all what we're doing specifically on Stormbrand and how we're making this version of the build come together. So the regular Stormbrand does invest a lot into crit and into spell damage. So you have like spell damage here, spell damage on your void batteries, that sort of thing. And all these things don't actually affect impulses, right? Which is kind of a problem because it means that you're getting very low value out of your impulses. Well, I've tweaked this version of the build to basically scale up impulsive damage really high. So to start off with, we have Replica Inyas of Epiphany, which is giving us 55% increased damage. That generic damage does affect impulses. Because we're running triple larges, we're now getting three of these lightning damage notables, so that's an extra 36. Then Inspired Oppression plus Astonishing Affliction, which we have on a few of our cost jewels, uh, giving us 20% each for a total of 40% on those mediums that have it. Now, you don't need to get Inspired Oppression on each of these clusters. You can simply run Astonishing Affliction with two smalls to get your 40% effect from each jewel. But it doesn't matter. You, it's going to cost you a lot if you get these two no notables together, but it, it's really not necessary. It's overkill in my experience. I tried it with and without, so don't get too caught up on that. Um, now, one of the things I take into this is Overshock. Overshock allows your maximum shock value to be increased from 50% to 60%. And it also gives you 30% increased effect of lightning ailments and 30% increased lightning damage. So. This means our shock effect is now increased by 200% for a total of 300%, which means we need only a third of the damage to hit each of the shock thresholds. Um, and then also the 30% increased lightning damage is more generic damage for impulses. And so you, you basically see this repeated across all our cluster jewels where we're just, just running this sort of thing. Now, what this means is that when you factor, the, and then also on our gloves, we're running conductivity on hit. Now, you don't have to do this. This is kind of optional. But I've added it in because conductivity on hit helps impulse the damage even further. And just before I move on, the Watcher's Eye is giving us Lightning Pen, which still affects Impulsor. And the end result is that your Impulsor explosions, instead of dealing 5% of the enemy's life, they end up dealing upwards of 50%. In the POB that I'm showing you right now and that I'm going to link in the description, we're getting 67% explosions, which is absolutely insane. It's kind of what you could have expected from the old Blade Vortex Explody Chest explosions when they were fully scaled last patch, but to my knowledge, this is pretty much the strongest explosion you can get on this current patch. Additionally, the normal self-chill characters have to run a special set of boots that have unaffected by shock. Very fortunately, we get that already for free from Impulses. As you can see, the last mod on Impulses, unaffected by shock. This allows you to be shocked 
but not actually affected by the shock, which is important because your Vessel of Vinkta and Malagaras basically make you take quite a lot of increased damage while you're shocked, right? But that's not going to be happening. We're just going to benefit from the shock in terms of it reflecting chill, and the shock itself does nothing. Now, for the rest of the build, we're still running pretty much everything that the normal power charge stacking assassin does. We've got a PC ring here, PC helm, badge of the brotherhood, void batteries, etc. You want to pretty much keep that core intact. We're still running Whispers of Doom because we want to be able to apply Assassin's Mark to bosses. Um, you'll have to have a look at my gem links because I've, I've swapped a few things around. So we're not doing the Ephemeral Bond swap in our amulets be with our amulets because we are very starved for decks when we do that in this setup. Um, instead, we are now... The way that you deal with Frenzy Charges on bosses is when you run up to a Conqueror while you're waiting for the Conqueror to spawn, you pop down a Hydrosphere and then you use Frenzy on it, and this refreshes your Frenzy Charges. Against Cirrus, you can use this to just generate all your Frenzy Charges, and then you only have to Frenzy Charge Cirrus once every 10 seconds or so in order to get the refresh on your Frenzy Charges. This allows you to just use Badge of the Brotherhood as a damaging amulet, which is superior to Ephemeral Bond anyway, and it's also less of a hassle having to do the swap. Uh, now, Vessel of Vinkta, you, you can use Storm's Gift. Storm's Gift would probably be the lower budget way to do this, but it's also kind of a problem because running this many uniques in this setup leaves us very starved for resists. So I, I had to roll this basically to have uh, double 40% res and then space for an extra suffix so I could craft an additional 40% resistance. And even with this, giving 120% resistance... We're only barely at the cap. I have to fix up my fire a little bit from Jules later on after I finish making this video. But basically, we're also picking up fire and lightning resistance on a whole bunch of jewels throughout our setup. So here, here, there. So as you can see, there are four fire and lightning resistance jewels in order to get our cap. So that's why I wouldn't really recommend Storm's Gift. It is cheaper, but... You're then gonna have a gonna have a really hard time capping out your resistances. You're probably gonna have to drop replicas in replica in use of Epiphany. Now, one of the reasons we run replica in use and we run badge is because the action speed is a multiplier to our movement speed. Rep this version of replica in use is giving us fifty five percent increased movement speed via our power charge scaling, and then a, an additional ten percent if we haven't been hit recently. And likewise, badge for the Brotherhood is scaling our elusive effect all the way up so that it, it caps at around eighty one percent movement speed or an average of about 40% movement speed, which is pretty much the amount of movement speed that the self chill Berserkers are getting as well, right? So that's why you want to do that setup. All up, this character hits about 465% movement speed when Elusive is at full effect and all flasks are running, which all flasks are pretty much always up. Now, one other tech I've made to this build is the flask jewel here. And as you can see, we've dropped all our brand clusters as well. We've also dropped one brand here. We did that because we needed the extra points to configure the tree, but if you were higher level, you could probably just take that again. The reason why we dropped the brand clusters is because we pretty much need all this ailment effect scaling, and in the end, it doesn't matter. Now, if you look at the gameplay clip that I've attached at the end of this video, you can see some map clears, see some conqueror clears. You'll be able to see that we don't really need the damage that we're getting from our brand jewels. The best thing about this is that self-chill berserkers, they use self-chill to scale up their damage because they kind of need to do so. We already have a ton of overkill damage once you're fully set up as a Stormbrand Assassin, so you can just sacrifice it, uh, all the overkill damage and just go for this stuff, but then you're still getting the shock effect, which is really useful. Um, now, the reason we do the fast thing is because Vessel of Vinkta consumes almost 60 charges every time you use it. So we're doing this to make sure that Vessel of Inktar is lasting even longer, and we're also gaining increased flask charges via Alchemist Genius when we kill things. I played a lot without this jewel, and then I played a lot with this jewel, and this jewel, this one flask jewel basically makes a massive difference. It's the difference between having Vessel of Inktar up for every pack and having it up only for about two-thirds of the packs, which slows down your clear quite a lot and also increases the amount of danger you face. As you can see, we've dropped down to about 5k EHP here. We've dropped Endurance Charges from the build. And we have also dropped Blind, since we don't really have room to fit it. But it's absolutely fine. The point of this build is pretty much just to go really fast. To clear map bosses as fast as possible. To spawn Cirrus as fast as possible. 
Um, now, I, I played this last night on stream, the entire night. We killed Cirrus Deathless every time. Killed the Conquerors just fine. This this build has still tons of damage, and thanks to the 60% shock effect, on pretty much every target that isn't Cirrus, we're getting 60% more damage right off the bat. Against Cirrus, the shock effect only scales up to about 20%, but that's still a really nice multiplier considering we've given up the brand jewel investment. Now, one recommendation I have if you're doing this is to understand that this is not a down. This is this isn't giving you the same kind of benefits that a headhunter is. Now, a lot of people have asked, "Can we fit inspired learning into the build?" And we we can, but we don't really want to. Inspired learning mainly helps you clear out alt things like ultimatums and difficult league mechanics. This build is just aimed at fast spawning Cirrus, and that's all it's re really there for. If you want to be interacting with all the league mechanics in a map, that's absolutely fine. I would still just recommend going with Headhunter or regularly Inspired Learning and not doing Self Chill. The main advantage of Self Chill is just accessing insane levels of movement speed and clear speed via the Impulsor scaling. But if you're not willing to just get into a map and run pretty much straight to the boss and clear all the packs that are along the way, skipping a lot of loot and all the league mechanics, I wouldn't do this build, right? So if you really want to run Inspired and clear your ultimatums, go ahead, but don't play this build. This build is just, as I said, you put in the map, you get into the map, you clear all the packs along the way, but you're only clearing the packs really just to keep your flasks up. You're not getting, you're skipping a lot of the loot that you pick up because you really can't afford to stop, otherwise your Vessel Vinktar is going to fall off a lot of the time. And you're making your money through the fact that you're going to be able to spawn Cirrus very fast. In a properly set up Atlas, you're probably, with this build, you're probably going to be able to get Cirrus up down about three times every two hours, or probably even twice an hour if you really pushed it. This is one of the fastest builds out there. Um, it's faster than what a raider, a non self chill raider is. I haven't really seen much of self chill raiders yet, to be able to say definitively how that compares to this. I would imagine that's slightly faster, but then one of the advantages you get here is that this can kill all your Conquerors and all your Cirruses, whereas a lot of the Raiders that you use to spawn Cirrus fast have to then swap to a second character in order to kill Cirrus. But this character is going to be able to do it all. We don't really have to invest big money to make this conversion, so if you have a bit of money lying around and you're playing my Stormbrand build, I absolutely recommend just doing this as a Cirrus farmer. It's, an, it's a lot of fun, as you're going to see shortly. So yeah. That's the video. Uh, the POB is included in the link below, and probably over the next day I'm going to update the forum guide to include all this information. Um, I just have to tweak out the POB probably just a little more from where it's at currently, but it shouldn't really matter. You know, even if we don't get the remaining four percent fire, is that's probably not going to make that much of a deal because we're just going so fast that, you know, most of the things that kill us are four percent resistance. Probably isn't going to make or break this build so yeah thanks a lot for watching uh if you want to see this in action come check me out on stream i stream every night pretty much um and yeah have a good one guys Inches them now as they awaken from their dreamless slumber. They are pulled by the leash of desire. Now is your chance to claim back victory.
Loss is nothing to be ashamed of. Wolf hungers. be a second loss in a row? your chance to claim back victory. With your death, this nightmare may finally end. 